In the name of God, most compassionate, most merciful, today we will be discussing the issue of jizya, which is, you can say, the uh, very misunderstood tax. And generally in the media it's talked about, oh God, you know, Muslims are going to fight us and then they're going to take jizya, they're going to take this money from us and they're going to subdue us and the Quran says to fight us and to, and to subdue us and then there are people like Robert Spencer and Daniel Pipes and the others who like to play on this and play on people's emotion and give them this confusion. Uh, as a Muslim I'm here to uh, resolve this confusion and I'm going to talk about this issue in some detail because I want to totally dispel the myths and what's happening is because of all the the, the stereotypes and myths going on even TV in TV, even some Muslims begin to question, is this really true, what they're saying, is this really true? No, it's not true. And so, first of all, the word jizya. The word jizya is from jaza, which means to compensate. And so, let me give you an example of us Muslims in America, for example. We are Muslims in America, and we are being discriminated against. So, if there was a tax, the U.S. government charged us a tax, where any discrimination, any abuse that is done against us, that money is collected specifically for our protection. So, for example, uh, if every Muslim, let's say there's 7 to 10 million Muslims in America, if we all paid, let's say, uh, a tax of, let's say, $100, that $100 tax that is collected from all the Muslims, and of course, paying tax means you submit to the system. This is understood. I don't know why people talk about, oh my God, they make us, you know, that the Muslims want the non-Muslims to pay them tax. Of course, if Muslims are living in America, we're going to pay taxes. And if it's, uh, if it's a majority Muslim country and they have their tax system, the non-Muslims there are going to also pay taxes just as they are in Egypt and, and Pakistan and in Saudi Arabia and so many Muslim countries, more than 51 million, more than 51 Muslim countries in the world, I think. And so Muslims are paying taxes here, there, everywhere. There has to be in law and order, of course. So there has to be, but the way we deal with knowing that they are a minority, and this is why it says, Ayyu'til jizya ayyadiw, and they give the jizya with their hands, meaning what? Not that every single person comes individually and gives jizya on their own, no. This is not what's being mentioned. What means ayat, that they as a community, as a people, they will collect the jizya money from amongst themselves. Okay, whatever it is, which I will discuss in a second what it is. And then they will hand that over as a community to the government. So the government's not interfering in the business of the minorities. And ayyadi wa hum salhirun, and they're small. They are, they are, they have, they don't have the same political clout as the majority and so therefore they're in a situation where they can be discriminated against and so the word jizya means to compensate them for that situation and also the people who are paying the, the, the jizya are called dhimmi which means that they are the responsibility of the government to make sure that their their property, their honor, their, their churches, their communities, they are safeguarded and protected. So that would be a great thing if Muslims could pay a jizya and the American government guarantees us that we will be not discriminated against, that we will be, if, they're, if, if we are fired because, we are, we're, because our women cover their head, that they would be protected against that, that they would, the government would prosecute people that would uh, abuse and hurt Muslims. That would be so beautiful if we had to pay, let's say, an extra hundred dollar, which is generally the amount that is for jizya, is about one, din one gold uh, dinar, which would be about a hundred dollars plus and minus. So, um, <clears throat> in the time of the Caliph, uh, Omar bin Khattab, who was one of the disciples of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, some of, the, uh, some of the people, some of the Christian community, they said to Omar, the disciple of, you know, it's like imagine if somebody went to Peter or, or one of the disciples of Jesus and asked a question. And so some a Christian people from the Christian community said, we don't want to call it jizya. We want to call it sadaqa. We want to call it charity because it is charity for us. And so Omar said, we accept that. You, if you want to call it sadaqah, you can call it sadaqah. There's no issue with us regarding that issue. So that's as far as that is concerned. Now, uh, what is jizya? What is the purpose of jizya? Prophet Muhammad, it was so, so Yusuf Qadawi, who was one of the scholars of Islam, you know, he says, a payment by the non-Muslim, meaning the minority in a Muslim land, according to the agreement signed by the state. So that's what it is. You're a minority, 
So let's say we have minorities in this country. Women are a minority, black are minorities. We talk about black reparations for the black people in this country. So how do you compensate people for their disadvantage? Well, if they pay a tax, a certain amount of tax, and then that tax is collected and then used for the, their benefit from the government, this is what how Islam deals with minority. This is how Islam... So any minority group, if they pay a certain tax for being part of that minority group, then the government takes it upon themselves to make guarantee them certain rights. So for example, uh, African American community has affirmative action, for example. And a lot of people don't like that. But if instead, for example, if we call, follow the Quranic uh, response to the issue of minorities, okay, that if they, they, in addition to having, let's say, affirmative action, or whatever it may be, but if they, in addition to that, they had a certain tax that they had to pay as a minority, so that it is a compensation for, uh, it is a compensation for, uh, for, because they're disadvantaged, so they're given a certain advantage. But that advantage that they're given comes at the disadvantage of the, of the, of the, of the majority, because they're being compensated. So, then how can this be balanced? It can be balanced by a guarantee of affirmative action for the African American community with the people, with the people of African American people, they be paying an extra tax for that affirmative action. So this is actually not a bad deal, it's a very fair deal. And so, uh, a payment by non-Muslim according to the agreement with the state, okay? Uh, so, in uh, uh, William Lane, who has the Arabic-English lexicon, defines jizya as a tax taken from free, non-Muslim subjects who are a minority there from a Muslim government, whereby they ratify the pact and the assurance uh, that assures them protection. So, in today's case, if Muslims gave an extra tax, so that we th there would be no discrimination against us, and if there was discrimination against us, the government would prosecute those people who are treating the minorities in that way. Okay? And in fact, not only have Muslims applied the system of jizya, but also, like for example, the Norman conquest of Sicily, he imposed uh, taxes on Muslims, and that was just fine. Now, let's go into the specifics of understanding the issue of jizya. So, I'm going to go over the main primary texts uh, over here in Sahih Bukhari, which is the main book of the Muslims, and uh, I'll go over this very quickly. Omar, who again is one of the disciples of the Prophet, as he was dying, because he was killed by somebody from the minority, he was killed by one of the Dhimmis, so it says, Omar is con Omar's concern for the well-being of the Dhimmis, that is the minorities, over in his deathbed, after he was stabbed by a mi person of the minority, Omar commanded, his would-be successor to abide by the rules and regulations concerning the protection that Allah and His Messenger to fulfill the contracts completely and uh, and and you know so uh, and, and not to burden anybody beyond their capabilities. Uh, one of the kings wrote to Prophet Muhammad that his people uh, are agreeing to pay tax, okay, as long as with whatever conditions that can be met. And so, an example is he said, "We'll pay taxes, we'll pay jizya, you protect us, but." Don't, let, don't make us move from our houses and all of that after they had lost the war. And so the Prophet agreed to that. Test, uh, and then also, uh, what is it that uh, the Prophet said? Uh, whoever killed a muahid, somebody who has been pledged by the Muslims, meaning somebody the Muslim state has guaranteed, or Muslims have guaranteed we will protect him, and if he got killed by one of the Muslims, the Prophet said he shall not smell the fragrance of par paradise even though its, its fragrance can be smelled from a distance of 40 years. Okay? And so, uh, the, what Islam says basically is, when you go to the battlefield and there's a battle, so there is, you can say, a, uh, there's an initial aspect of jizya, and then there is the process of jizya. The initial is when you're at war. So this is why the Prophet said, fight, the, fight them until they worship one God meaning one true God, or they pay jizya, meaning what? Either they come to a peace treaty, so either you fight them to bring them to a peace treaty, because we as Muslims are not allowed to force anyone to Islam, la ikrah fid deen, there's no compulsion in, in making anyone anything. The real thing is, is that if you're going to go to war, even go to war 
to bring about a peace treaty between you and the other party. And uh, then if there is a peace treaty, they can have their own autonomy or they can submerge into the Muslim, uh, into the Muslim uh, majority. And if they have submerged themselves into the Muslim majority, then they need to be protected because no matter how fair a people are, how right they think they are, there is a possibility of bias against the minorities. And so this is uh, the issue that's being discussed. Uh, and then uh, the then also uh, in Sahih Muslim, uh, it has been mentioned in, 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 like for example in Sahih Bukhari, it's been mentioned that when Jesus, peace be upon him, comes back to earth, he will abolish the jizya. That at that time, so it's not a hard and fast rule. This shows us that the rules of jizya, coming to the agreement with the other party, and all of these things are flexible within Islam, but the idea that we have to protect those people that are under the Islamic State, their, their rights have to be protected, and in that protection, uh, they have to, they, they all collectively contribute, and then the government takes the, the, the responsibility of full protection. So in the time of war, it's to bring them to peace. This is the initial stage. Then once they are part of the state, part of the system, then they are contributing to making sure there's no, there's no bias or bigotry or uh, uh, you can say uh, s s some abuse done to them. And if there is, the government takes responsibility for that. And they are paying for that protection. They're paying a special tax and it's being done because it has to be done in a special way where not every single person's coming and paying their own individual tax, but the community is allowed to autonomously collect its own money that it has to then give to the government. So, uh, and there are uh, other rules uh, regarding this. Uh, re it's not just Christians and Jews, but also people of other religions. They can also be... Uh, part of this jizya. So this is what is meant by minal in verse number 29 where and also I have to make this clear verse number 29 is talking about a very specific incident and this is why before every chapter of the Quran it says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of God most compassionate most merciful every single chapter but this chapter chapter number 9 it doesn't because Allah and the Muslims recognize that the wordings in this chapter are harsh this is understood but it's being it's harsh for a specific group of people and for a specific time because the Prophet said no one is allowed to kill in the sanctity of Makkah. No one is allowed to but Allah has given me permission only for a part of the day and that was the day the Prophet entered Makkah as a conqueror, as the crownless king of Arabia, he enters there as a, as a conqueror and there were certain war criminals that had to be captured and had to be brought to justice because the number of people that they had murdered and slaughtered and, and, the, and, the, and, and the genocide that they had committed. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that for that day, for that time, just that time, he was allowed to use force and uh, 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 you can say, uh, use, uh, uh, you can say, bring people to justice and even to the point where if somebody is in Mecca and he's a criminal, well, no bloodshed can be uh, spilled in that area. Okay, And so it is prohibited to fight in that area, it's prohibited to go to war in that area, and just for that time before and after this, meaning from, from that day the Prophet entered on that day till the day of judgment, till the end of this world, th there is no bloodshed allowed in that area. And so just as that exception is given okay so the words in these verses are harsh than uh, compared to uh, other parts of the Quran but the context is that the Prophet is already at war oppression has been done on the Muslims Prophet Muhammad was in Mecca where his companions were being tortured suppressed oppressed their their lives their property were taken their they were humiliated they were dishonored they were kicked and expelled from their own lands and from their own homes and certain war criminals had committed crimes that when Prophet Muhammad gained the strength and came back, 
he then said certain people have to be put to justice. Just like when Jesus, peace be upon him, entered Jerusalem, he said, whoever does not accept me as the king, bring, bring him before me and slay him. This is there in the New Testament. So in the same way, certain war criminals had to be brought to the justice. But the main thing is that we find in verse number 29, and they are in a state of uh, subjection or uh, smallness, meaning they are a minority, they, have to, they, they need to be protected, they are the responsibility now of the Muslim state, and for that there is a special tax that's a very small tax, and, and the Muslims also have a tax by the way, it's called zakat, but that, and the zakat money can go for Muslims, and it can also go for non-Muslims, depending upon the situation. And so, the tax, uh, so the Muslims have a tax which is much greater. It's 2.5% of every single individual's yearly saving. So whoever has, if they meet, let's say, around $2,000 saving for a year, then you have to give 2.5% uh, tax to the government that will be used for charity work and for uh, for helping the community, and that may include even non-Muslims at times. So, uh, so this is Islam's way of protecting the minority, not abusing the minority. So, I hope I have been able to clarify at least some aspects of this uh, issue to some degree, where it is clear, first of all, jizya has that aspect that has to do with war, and then what's after the war. And this is, after the war, it is for the protection of the minorities to make sure, like the disciple of the Prophet was worried at his deathbed because he got killed by a somebody in the responsibility of the Muslims. He, is, he, was, uh, he was not a Muslim, he killed the disciple of the Prophet and he was worried in his deathbed that, that out of anger if Muslims will uh, not hold on to their, uh, to, their, to, their, to their promise to God that when they make a peace treaty with a people that they would uphold it no matter what. And so this is how, this is how uh, Islam teaches us to deal with minorities. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I will be talking about a lot more issues that have to do with some of these controversial issues. So play, please stay tuned and you will, I think, uh, learn a lot. Thank you.